Family. Dear Alexander. 20. Quote. Friendship is a reciprocal arrangement. You are not morally obligated to support someone who is making the world a worse place. Quite the opposite. You should choose people who want things to be better, not worse. It's a good thing, not a selfish thing, to choose people who are good for you. It's appropriate and praiseworthy to associate with people whose lives would be improved if they saw your life improve. End quote. This idea is not mutually exclusive to family. I don't believe you or I should feel morally obligated to support your family, whether it be a father, mother, sister, or brother, if they are dragging you down and making your life more hellish. Being family doesn't exclude them from taking responsibility for their actions. Culture has attached these grand emotional sentiments to family and friends that often manifest into poisonous relationships that everyone feels trapped by, by obligation. An obligation by an unwritten cultural rule that family always sticks together, or f- always family first, or you always take care of your family. It's important to question these cultural rules in the face of turmoil and unhealthy relationships. We put family on this huge pedestal that almost removes them from taking responsibility for the hell they can impart on one's life. Quote, if I stay in an unhealthy relationship with you, perhaps it's because I'm too weak-willed and indecisive to leave, but I don't want to know it. Thus, I continue helping you and console myself with my pointless martyrdom. Maybe I can then conclude about myself, someone that's self-sacrificing, that willing to help someone, that has to be a good person. Not so. It might be just a person trying to look good, feel good, and pretending to solve what appears to be a difficult problem instead of actually being good and addressing something real. End quote. Being family doesn't mean you have to give unlimited chances to prove they can get their act together. It doesn't mean you have to stand by their self-destruction and watch them burn just because you want to be there for them. They end up not only burning themselves, but everything around them caught in the crossfire. That includes you. Why is it selfish to save yourself? Maybe it is actually selfish, but maybe that's not a bad thing in some circumstances. Maybe it's exactly what's needed to put your oxygen mask on first to put the water over the fire burning in your kitchen. Maybe you'd feel too guilty to step back or walk away. Maybe you need to go down the chasm with them so they know they're not alone and you know you're a good person. Or maybe you need to stand up for yourself and realize when enough is enough. When you've climbed into the chasm a dozen times to save someone who doesn't want to be saved, one day you might fall down with them and not return. Is that a risk you're willing to take? Can you, sh- can your strength of character handle such suffering? Maybe it can. Maybe it can't. Maybe you need to save yourself so you can one day help those who want to be helped in the future. Those who actually can be helped and saved. Here's a possible solution. Quote, If you surround yourself with people who support your upward aim, they will not tolerate your cynicism and destructiveness. They will instead encourage you when you do good for yourself and others and punish you carefully when you do not. This will help bolster your resolve to do what you should in the most appropriate and careful manner. People who are not aiming up will do the opposite. They will offer a former smoker a cigarette and a former alcoholic a beer. End quote. You know, as I reflect upon this over two years later, after writing this, once again, this came from a place of emotion. This came from a place of frustration. And so now being in more of a calm, homeostatic, more tempered state, more rational, logical state, still acknowledging the problems in the past and the present that triggered me to feel and write this, my perspective on family is not as disconnected as it was then. Family, friends, and those close to me who I care about have never been more important to me. When I wrote this, family, close friends... 
relationships and people were not as high of a priority and importance in my life as they are now. And so while I believe in the general sentiment still of of the writing I, I made here, I don't know if I believe in it so aggressively in a way where you would assume you would force yourself to completely disconnect yourself from family members who are quote unquote holding you down. That may not be as necessary, harsh of an action to take compared to simply distancing yourself intelligently and still being there for them and caring for them and spending time with them when it's time to spend time with them. So that's how I'd reflect two years later on this one.